Right, so uh, thanks for joining us, Mick. Um, it's all right. I understand uh, you joined at Felton Depot, if you could tell us a bit about the date and yeah. uh, your, your first sort of memories in the Felton Depot. Yeah. Well, I, f I first started in uh, 1956, the day after Boxing Day, the 27th of December, 1956. And uh, I always remember I bought a pair of ex-army boots. Um, I think they were about seven and six at the time uh, to work in. But the only problem was being ex army, they had big studs and blakies on the back. So the day I started, it was a very thick frost. And walking from the Duke of York to the Loco was uh, pretty slippery, and the boots didn't help much neither. It was like skating on Richmond Ice Rink. <laughs> but we got down to the we got down to the uh, the Loco, and they they dug out the old cleaner for when the man called Arthur Lobb, who only had one leg. He lost his leg by. Um, tripping on a point and or going underneath a, an engine and he said righto boys he said let's get you a suit of clothes each and um, so we went up into this old this old um, clothing store which was an old uh, coach which hadn't moved for about 30 40 years and um, he gave us a suit of clothes and then we got off and then we expected to do something and he he, he, he rubbed on the back Backside, and he said, Hello, boys. He said, Let's go and find a nice warm one. It's a bit chilly to do anything today. Anyway, we got up there, and it was on an old 700 class, a black motor, as we called them. And uh, I looked at all the, the, the boiler front, and I said to my mate, We're never going to get any idea of how this works because there was a, what we thought was loads of gauges and handles and levers. But because looking back on it, and thank God he didn't take us on the military navy. So uh, anyway, that was a start of uh, eight years of uh, felt loco, cleaning and firing, and so eventually passing out as a driver at, uh, to go on the, on the juice when when our dear old friend Dr. Beechin decided to take his saw to the railway and uh, chop it in pieces. If only we could have it back now, we'd chop the bar. Just, oh, you'd have to delete that. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, not at all. So what, what sort of reception did you get as a cleaner, Mick, sort of new to the railway, bit of a foreign world? Um, what was the sort of, did you have your own room? Did you have a <laughs> cup of tea in your place? Or? Our own room? Well, the cleaner's lobby, as they called it, was uh, next to the driver's lobby, but it was completely different. It was worlds away. Uh, there, was, there had been a window, but as cleaners do, they've been lobbing knobs of coal at it. And there, there was no glass in it whatsoever. So the day we started on the 27th of November, there was the Arctic blast coming through. And that's what we had, a table, uh, no table, two benches. So if you want to eat, you put your food and your cup of coffee or a cup of tea on the bench, sat astride the bench and, and, that, and ate your sandwiches and coffee. Um, one day, one of, the, one of the wags decided to wire up the light because he'd fell out with one of the other cleaners. He decided to wire the light up to uh, the door handle. And the, the door handle was um, the old um, bolt that holds the uh, chairs down. They just whacked that through. We didn't have, we didn't have a lot of turn or nothing like that. Anyway, he wired up this light turned it on, so it was all live, and there was a, this almighty bang and scream as the door opened, and we thought it was his mate. It wasn't, it was, it was the, uh, one of the running foremen who was, we found laying on, <laughs> on number one road, flat on his back. <laughs> you can imagine with his hair standing on end. Anyway, we made a bolt for the exit, and the, the, <laughs> but he, he was, a, he was a, an old, a real nice fella called Bob Shoe, and if anybody knew Bob Shoe, he he, he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't do anything to get you the sack at all. He just laughed it off, and it went, went on like that. A few years later, or a few months later, in the summer, they were reconcreting the, uh, the the roof on the, they were spraying it with concrete to strengthen it all. And me and a mate of mine, Frank Barker, we went up and we were. We were on the 12 o'clock um, shift for cleaning 
and um, the foreman, the cleaner foreman, would give us a list of engines to clean because he was going home at four and we weren't finished till 8 pm at night. He said, Do them well. I think the trick was to clean them as quick as you could, then you could have you could have water fights and God knows what. Anyway, we're going to have this water fight. Me and Frank got on the roof and we discovered this horrible, foul smelling uh, seven gallon, five, five gallon drum that the, uh, the Irish navvies have been using for their, their latrine, as we put it. Anyway, we had a bloke we was up against, a bloke called Freddie Diet. Now, Fred used to come to work, he, his wife used to bleach his overalls. He had, looked absolutely beautiful. Anyway, he had Blakey's on his heels, and we were up above, above the sand pit where the the, um, you, you gain access from the shed to the pit and we heard dear old Fred clomping through because we heard him clicking away with his with his blakies. So there we are with his five gallons of crap and other excrement in it and when Fred stuck his head out we just let him have it, tip, tip the lot out. But what we didn't realise it was Bob Shoe again. <laughs> And this time we really thought we was at it, because there's Bob going, <laughs> blowing it off his nose and God knows what. We actually got suspended for five days for that little laugh, but we, 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 we survived to uh, carry on. <laughs> so I wondered if it's possible, Mick, if, if you could um, explain what Felton Depot, Felton Shed was like in the days you started. And, and also, um, you've obviously started as a cleaner what was the role of a cleaner and, and can you remember the, the different types of locos because I know Felton had, had quite a uh, varied locos visited. Yeah, it's um, when I started at Felton, uh, the, the engines were, as you say, quite varied. And we had specialist engines there, like the, the humpers, which uh, weren't operating on the hump because they got the 350s about 18 months before. So the humpers and the green tanks as we called them, um, they they did um, inter-regional uh, movements to Neesden and Wilsden and Brent. Um, occasionally the green tanks were used for um, summer excursions out of Waterloo. You know. Uh, but the but the uh, the humpers being quite a specialist tool, if you like, um, they really didn't do a lot of work. Um, it, it was just inter inter regional traction. Um, we had the Q ones, which we called Charlies, but I know a lot of uh, a lot of chuff and that's called them coffee pots. Why I don't, don't really know, but we had those. Um, we had this one that we're sitting on, the 500s, the 800s. So there was quite a varied uh, stable at, um, at, at Felton. We had uh, Black Motors, which is the 700 class. Uh, we had a couple of jumbos there. Now these didn't do 600 mile an hour. They were lucky to get the 6 mile an hour. They were used for shunting on the west end and the east end of Felton. That was predominantly what they was used for. Or they might move to uh, go to Staines. Um, yeah, so there's quite a varied list there. Um, um, we used to go to <coughs> we used to go to Reading, um, go to from Waterloo to Ascot with a fish. Um, yeah, get all over. So when you um, you obviously started as a cleaner <coughs> that you told us about. Um, what, what was next in your employment? Uh, how long were you a cleaner for at Felton? Uh, did you then go on to become a, a fireman? Yeah, I, I, I started, as I said, I started in Christmas 1956 and I was 16 in September 57. And um, it was then, when you were 16, you were sent to Guildford to the firing school to pass out as a fireman to be taught how to dispose and various things on the engine. And then I passed out from there and I came back and it was about, you then became a past cleaner. 
So what that meant was that when the if the uh, foreman was short of firemen, he yanked you off the cleaning job and put you in a, with another with a driver to to be a, a fireman and do a, a firing duty. That mostly that firing duty would consist of shunting in the yard. You never went out on the main line. Very rarely did you go on the main line. So it was just really starting at the bottom. You know. So um, I um, I did that until I was a firing vacancy came up at uh, at Felton, and I went into the what they call the Jorlik. That was that was drivers who were eventually they're going to go on to the electric side, the juice and they would be in this link of their own. There's about 12, 14 of them. Naturally, actually my first uh, driver was with a man called Les Purdy and I said to him one day, well my grand's called Purdy, he said, is she? Anyway he got talking to his grand and it turns out his grand and my grand went to school together how yeah, much of a coincidence is that? So, and then stayed with Les till he went on to the juice. He went to the juice at Ascot because there was a depot there. And then I progressed up the links with a in number two link, which the, the work was better. You know, you, you didn't do didn't do any P and D preparation disposal in number two or on number one link, uh, and the the turns were better. And as much as you would go. Uh, a bit further afield, Hither Green, uh, Temple Mills, uh, Willsden. Temple Mills was quite a, quite a nice place to go to because they just rebuilt it and reowned it. And it's the first time I saw a, retar a wagon retarder. They'd, they'd put it over the hump and then the signalman would press a button and the wheel retarder was, would clamp the wheels to, just to slow it down. Whereas before that in Felton Yard where we had the humps, you had the, the dangerous um, practice of the shunter getting his brake stick, pushing it into the brake uh, handle, and actually sitting on the handle, riding down uh, to to stop it banging into uh, into the uh, the, wa the rafter wagons it was going on. Now, normally you'd have to go to a fun fair and pay a pound pound a pop to have a thrill like that. This guy got it every day for free. <laughs> so when you touched on briefly, we're, we're obviously sat on 506 at the moment. Yeah. Um, do you have many memories of 506 or S15s in general? Well, in S15 in general, yeah. Um, you didn't really remember specific logos unless something happened to you on it. But um, yeah, I mean, they were, they were lovely engines. You know, the only thing, as I said, what, what happened was, if you had to go to tender, if you had to go to tender first, um, you did finish up with uh, a really black face, and the only way you could see your mate was if he if he blinked, and you see the white of his eyes. <laughs> so you did um, obviously. You were saying that you became a, a past cleaner, yep. and you went to the school at Guildford. Yep. Was that actually a 70C steamship? Was it? Me? Or was that nearby? Well, it was actually, I don't know if any of it, well, m many people will know the layout of, uh, of Guildford at the time, but it was it was a, a wooden shed, I'd call it, a very large wooden shed that was up the bank by the road. There's a fish and chip shop that was quite famous, everybody go to this fish and chip shop. It was just near there. And um, went there for two weeks, learned how to become a fireman. And yeah, it was quite good. Um, me and Frank Barker, we went round to um, to Waybridge from Felton to catch the Guildford train. And when we got on the Guildford train, there was there was three or four Nine Elms men there, young cleaners like us. Um, and one of them was Alan Don. Alan Don became quite infamous by having one of his feet cut off and so did his father, and so did his brother. And strangely enough, it was the same same engine on different dates that took took all their feet off. <laughs> so, can you re recall um, after you'd done your course at Guildford and, and you're a past cleaner, 
um, I'd say to take you stay the past cleaner on completion of that course, not yes. becoming a fireman at that no, no. time. So, could you recall sort of one of your early trips out on the main line? As I said before, you never you never really went as a past cleaner. You you, you were pretty much um, shed bound, really. You just did prep disposal, perhaps oh. move a. The one we had at uh, Felt was the uh, the hopper. You go and be the farmer on that, and all that was simply pushing four wagons of coal onto the hopper to fill the hopper up. So it was just really when you was a pass cleaner, you did very little out on the main line. But of course, once you become 16 and you got your farmer's job, um, yeah, that, that was a different matter. So you, you mentioned that earlier. When you turned 16, you became a fireman. And um, what, just for the uh, viewers' uh, idea, what length did you go into when you became a fireman at Phil? Well, I, I went into the um, dual link, which was full of drivers. Drivers that were in there, they were they were dual drivers. They passed out on the electrics and they passed out on the steam, and they could be used to utilise for anything. And they were put in a dual link until a vacancy came up at one of the depots of Ascot or Hounslow or Chertsey or if they wanted to go to Waterloo but uh, that's what that's what the dual link was. So when you went into that dual link how, how long did you remain working with steam before you moved to electric? Well it all come down to um, seniority where there was a rank and see one of the electric trains uh, depots but I stayed in the, as a fireman, I stayed in the jewelry possibly for about another year. Then I went, uh, I went up into number three link with a man called Gus Greenwood. And Gus Greenwood was a real, real one-off. He would open the door of the drivers and fireman's cabin. He'd have a torch lamp in one hand and his cheeks would be blown out. And you think, what the bloody hell's coming here? Anyway, you go, this massive sheet of flame would come out and it would be going all around the room and he, he'd shut the door and run off, run up, run up number one road, laughing his head off. And sad to say, poor old Gus didn't last, last long at the retirement and he lost his teeth pretty early for some reason. I don't know what that was. <laughs> overheating, I rather suspect. Not overeating, overheating. So, so when you moved on to that link, um, we're, we're obviously, as I say, sat on 506 at the minute at the watercress line. Did you, during your time on the footplate, ever come over the watercress line at all? I did come over the watercress line, but it was very late in my firing career. It was when they shut, uh, when they were electrifying the, the Bournemouth Road down to there, and they, they diverted a lot of traffic across the watercress line. To come out when it comes out of Winchester, and uh, I did go over there a couple of times. So yeah, but that's the only time. Well, thanks for that. Um, and obviously, with the end of steam sort of drawing near in '67, um, where did your career take you then, Nick? Well, I was quite lucky in respect. I, I was married with a, with a, a young baby, John. He, he's now a a driver at uh, Staines and um, so they Beachy had decided he was going to have the cuts. <coughs> I was in my front garden one day and a man called Ern Channing came around the corner and uh, Ern Channing was uh, to do a sectional council so he knew what was coming before anybody else did and he called me over and he said I want to work with you, young Chandler. There's big changes coming to the railway. He said, you've got a young family. He said, I can tell you now there's a job coming up at Hampton Court on the juice. And my advice to you is to put in for it. Anyway, I did. And I, I got the job at Hampton Court, which might seem strange for people to realise there was a, a depot at Hampton Court because it's now a, just a two-line two station. But I went there in '64, um, and uh, I wasn't there that long. In fact, I was there for two weeks. 
if you saw the first preference in for Strawberry Hill. The first time we were back going to Strawberry Hill, <coughs> excuse me, was when I went to the pay office at Hanson Court. It's a booking clerk, the booking office. And I said to the booking clerk, I said, um, I've come to my pay, showed him the pay card. He said, well, there's nothing here for you. And I said, well, where is it? He said, I don't know, you better go back to Felton and ask him where it is. So I went back to Felton, expecting to get me pay. And they said, no, it's at Strawberry Hill. You, you, you've moved there, but nobody's told you. <laughs> yeah, so I went to Strawberry Hill in uh, 1964. And I stayed there till, well, till the day I retired. And I retired a, a year early, uh, by preference. So I stayed there till 90, uh, sorry, 2005. So, stayed there a long time. I finished up at Strawberry Hill in a thing called the Jurassic Link. Now, the reason it was called the Jurassic Link is it was six whole, uh, six of the senior drivers. <coughs> and we did the into that home moves for um, the Portabrook. It was all privatised by then, and we it was really good. We went, went all over the place. Went down to Brighton, went to Lovers Walk, to Bournemouth, um, Ashford, and so we went all over. So that was a nice, nice finish to my career. So sort of putting putting us into the into a, a, a soft sleep, if you like, to get ready for retirement. <laughs> and one day, um, I was asked to take a young signalman from uh, from Wimbledon to Chart Leacon in Ashford. And it turns out to be my own lad, Anthony, or Tony, as he likes to be called. So he had a trip out with the old man. Happy memories. Yeah, it certainly was, in it? Anthony remembers it, or Tony remembers it. Right, so we've uh, now come outside uh, Mick and I thought we'd bring you up to these uh, lovely freight wagons here with your connection with Felton. Um, just wondered in your own time if you've got any stories relating to uh, any of the freight moves that you did. One Sunday I was sent with my driver to Basingstoke to relieve on the up banana train from Southampton to Temple Meads. The idea was that I would get relief at Felton because my eight hours would be up by then. Anyway, on arrival at Felton, there was just a driver standing on his own and he explained that the driver, the, the fireman that uh, should have relieved me had gone sick, but uh, the foreman asked me if I would go up to Temple Mills and back to light, light to Felton with it. So I said, yeah, okay. Anyway, we got to um, towards Temple Mills and uh, we got to a signal that was at uh, a, a, a stop. And it turned out that the signalman had got fed up. He'd, he'd done his 12 hours and he was going home. So he just simply locked the, locked the, the box out. So anyway, uh, the driver got on the phone, on the signal phone to somebody and they explained that we couldn't get to Temple Mills till the morning, till they had opened the, the uh, early turn signalman to come on. The upshot of it was that I actually did about uh, 16, 17 hours. And when I got home, I was living at, at home then with my mum and dad at the time. And mum said, uh, oh, you're home, are you? So I said, yeah. She said, well, I got a bit worried about you. So I went down to the loco to find out where you were. <laughs> Well, as an 18-year-old, I wasn't very, wasn't very happy about that, that my mum was running about, worried about me. I mean, I was 18 years old, I was an adult, I was a big man, wasn't I? Mummy was definitely not going to run about looking for me. Anyway, I, I managed to live that down after a while, and uh, everything settled down. And yeah, things carried on practically just as it was. All right, uh, another question for you, Mick, if I, if I may ask. Um, I believe there's, there's quite a family connection with the railway in general and, and not just Felton. I wonder if you could uh, give us a bit of information about the family connections. Yep. My dad started on the railway. He was an apprentice plumber and he got his, he got the sack by putting his foot through a ceiling. So he's while well, doing a plumbing job in the attic. So he got the sack for that. And the only job available was uh, was a, a horse driver's uh, 
job at Twickenham and because my granddad was a, a horse keeper dad knew everything about horses so at 16 he was given the job of a delivery man around the Twickenham area by a horse and cart which he loved but after after they did did out without the horses he moved to Feltham as a shunter um, and consequently the old man he'd had such a good life on the railway um, I went on my brother Den went on and uh, my, bro yeah, my youngest brother Jeff he went on as well we were all on the footplate but um, the other two brothers actually, actually had to come off for medical reasons and then my son went on the eldest son John who's a driver at Staines now our youngest son I better call him Tony because his, his real name's Anthony but he, he thinks that's a bit Anthony's a bit girly like but but he goes by the name of Tony and I expect everybody who knows him you know him what he is he started on a the railway then I had a cousin who's a driver at Bournemouth Alan I had um, an uncle at Ride on the Isle of Wight he was on the, uh, the carriage and wagon and because there's only one depot now on the Isle of Wight and that's he retired from there uh, I had a cousin who was my uncle's son on the Isle of Wight and he used to drive a thing from the Ride Pier Head to Ride Station called it was like a baggage train actually it was it was really quite dangerous it was an old Bedford lorry that they put railway wheels on which is quite pretty quite common now isn't it and they he used to meet the boats coming in from Portsmouth and the holiday makers in particular used to put their suitcases on the onto this uh, cobbled together train and he'd drive it from um, Ride Pier Head to Ride Station well he only lasted one season he was bored out of his skull wasn't he running up and down on that bit so so there's quite a, quite a few of us on the railway um, my daughter Julie she was at Waterloo as a uh, she worked on the clerical side she worked on the uh, the booking and the telephone side and uh, I think that's about it but there's quite enough of us to uh, have, a, have a, a meeting of uh, old railway employees if you like but interesting as we were walking up yeah Mick said to me he said we always used to dread yeah. when the foremost gave us 499 yeah because it was a bad steamer she was a rough old boot was she yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you could never make your mind up whether she went a light fire heavy fire or what like no, you know no. she just got temperamental on yeah, the day yeah you know? so but, yeah but it's a usual thing it's a blast pipe didn't line up something's leaking yeah. in the front end an element yeah, the rings out. yeah yeah yeah, the, the water goes down the glass quicker than anything else. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the only thing I'll say, because we've only had experience here, but they, when you when you sort of drive them or you're up the line, they don't don't you don't pick her feet up. They they just sort of just sit there and just plod along. Just plod it. Yeah. yeah. There's an idea of goods. Yeah. Did you want it? Yeah. Because that's all you wanted to yeah. do with the yeah. goods. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't yeah. want to sort of no. do any no. uh, no. racing no. speeds with it. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's a, like I said, when we got her, she was a tired old piece of kit. Yeah. Um, the actual frame had completely split beyond the motion bracket. Completely. Completely, she broke her back. So what we've done, we've put new frames on from just on the centre of the leading driving wheel. Yeah. And all the way forward, right to the front. So the only bit that's original is the balance. We, we salvaged the balance piece on there. Obviously the cylinder blocks have been refitted and the centre casting has been refitted. Mm new buffer beam, all new plate work, um, so yeah we, we probably got her back as near as we can get her back. Yeah, 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 yeah but won't. no she was, we didn't know she was as bad, we knew she was bad but she didn't know we were that bad. No, so we, we, but it could have been me doing something to it. Well, well, <laughs> all I know is that I've spoken to a fair few guys and they said to me they were tired, run down, you know, yeah. they, they wouldn't have done another general repair. No. no. Oh, yeah, yeah oh, geez, uh, we'll get there when we get there, sort of thing. But uh, we've done the same. We did they tell you you've done the same repair to 506. We've given her half new frames as well. No. Yeah, That's yeah. We we done new frames, a little bit further forward, just just by the, by the cylinder block. Everything else has all been replaced exactly mm. the same. So, uh, so you know, the experience you had with 506. Well, yeah, it's like a lot of things. It wasn't just it wasn't just the fact that the frames were cracked. 
the corrosion would push the cylinder blocks out. And the corrosion had got in the smoke box and started to push the frames off of the center stretcher. Mm. So the engine was literally forcing itself apart. So, you know, and then that and Eastley had put patches inside because the frames had corroded through the smoke box. Yeah. So they, they, they were, they'd had it in the, in the early 60s. In the, yeah. You know, I think they probably got their, as I said, they had their money's worth out. Right? Yeah. But no, everybody says the same, you know, just sit there and they, they just slog away. Oh. Yeah. Like oh yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Because the trick then was to uh, you get on the train on the man on the engine on the Monday, and the driver yeah. would say, "Yeah, right. If you've got any big knobs of coal, throw yeah. them up the back." Cause yeah. We want them for exactly. <laughs> so we were stuck with the dust. Yeah. And they went under the door. I yeah. Bet. I bet. Stick yeah. them under the door. Yeah. 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 No, as I said, she's been a five or six. Has been a good, reliable engine, actually. Um, yeah. Obviously a bit biased, but it's one of the best we've got. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> one of the yeah, on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you don't send us out on a flat top, he said, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What sort of turns um, would you have done on 499, Mick? Just freight runs or? Yeah, purely freight runs. Uh, as I said, you know, they didn't tend to put them on the Saturday afternoon passenger job. They would... Uh, we would get an eight on that, eight hundred. But uh, yeah. And I suppose as they got further and further away from having work at Eastley, they got rougher and rougher and yeah, rougher. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Now we send the best engines out on passenger work, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the crap goes over the front. Yeah. 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 So did you work out of Southampton docks and work all the way up? Did. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because we've got quite a lot of pictures of these working like banana trains and stuff like that. Well, that's what I was just yeah. saying back there. Yeah. I worked for a banana train. Yeah? Yeah, I, um, yeah. I went down to Basingstoke to relieve on this uh, banana train yeah. to Temple Mills. Yeah. And when we got to Felton, there was, there was no relief oh, for yeah. me, yeah. relief for the driver. Somebody knew the road to Temple Mills from there, didn't they? Yeah, so I, I went through with the train yeah. as a final. And when we got to Stratford, there was uh, the signalman that he'd had enough. Mm. He'd done his 12 hours, and he decided to lock out. We were locked out with him. Yeah. So you just had to sit there and wait for development. And finish up doing 16, 17 hours. Yeah. And when I got back to Felt, when I got home, yeah. my mum said, well, I've been down the local and asked where you were. I, said, I was 18, yeah. you know. Ask him where I am. <laughs> what, my child? <laughs> I wasn't very happy with mummy. Oh, yeah. Well, I suppose that's it. You just had to take the rough with the smooth. Yeah. And was there any smooth? Was it all rough? <laughs> no, there was. There was a lot of smooth. I can tell you that. Yeah. 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 Well, we, but we, do, we, you, do you we, find we, the same? You've got a good driver, a good mate. Yeah. And you're fine. Oh yeah. You got somebody that's yeah. put a chalk mark on the floor and says, "That's your side. That's mine." Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 No, I, we say here, you, you go out as a team, as a couple of blokes, you know, and you get, you come back, you've had a good day. It's yeah. nice to say. Yeah. You know. That's right. And if it's not going too well. It's a, the driver and the farmer have to work together, don't they? Yeah. There's no good, no good pushing the rover right and, and letting the gear out and no. just sit there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did threaten to hit one driver in the head with a cul with a spiky <laughs> end of the coal pit one day. Was he giving yeah, you? No, was he leather leathering it a bit? Right? Yeah. Yeah. That over there. Straight out. Gear lever over there. Yeah. yeah. Everything was going out the chimney. Yeah. Yeah. So. Ah uh, well, there's the good and the bad, isn't there? Yeah, l luckily enough, they was uh, mostly good. Yeah. You know, so. yeah. Well, the thing is, uh, the blokes with you, your driver, he come up the same way. Of course, yeah. 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 And he had. He, what did you say when you had them? They were brand new, mate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The last driver I had was a, a man called Harry Elliott. Yeah. And uh, for the first six weeks, he never spoke at all. And it was my regular mate in the top link. Yeah. And I said to my dad, I said, I'm going to bury the coal pit in his head. I said, you know, I'm getting really fed up with it. Mm. He didn't want to go to work. No. But the, the, the culmination of it all was we used to work at a train called 
that, that was a 1255 out of Felton down to Basingstoke. Mm. It's quite a heavy train. Mm. And we went under the hopper, took coal, and I tested, went and tested his injector. Yeah. Didn't work. So I told him, I said, we've only got one injector going. So you're going to see the foreman, and then he'd give us a, it's a Charlie, a Q1. Yeah, yeah. I thought, yeah, and we didn't get any reduction on the, the weight of the, yeah. the train, so we had the equivalent of on, on a Charlie, but we should have had on a 500. Yeah. And uh, I kept the old steam right the way over, all the way. Mm. And we got off, and he went, Do you know what Mickey said? That's the best run I've ever had on a you're Charlie. Gonna, you're going to fall through the floor, could you? <laughs> yeah, I thought, Well, I better pick the coal pick up, not bury it in his head now. <laughs> and yeah. he was great. I yeah. had him for the next four years till yeah. I passed out to drive him. Yeah. And it's, it was really enjoyable. Yeah. You know? The only thing with him, he used to bring a bottle of cold tea with him, yeah. and he put it in the tray above the firebox yeah. to warm up. Yeah. But I used to make my own tea in a in a can, yeah. and eventually I managed to get him out of the bottle yeah. into the can. can. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, we've all done the same things. The tea's on there, and the and the old. Uh, the old regulator stuff in boxes dripping a bit. Yeah, that's right. And it's uh, put a nice flavour in yeah, it. Yeah, you wonder why you finish up with a can for when you get yeah, where you're you going. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. I think it's I think it's the camaraderie ship, if that's the word, on the footplate. And if you haven't yeah. got it, you might as well not bother. Yeah, no, that's right. I mean, we've all taken the mickey out of somebody saying, you know, the tide gone out and things yeah. like that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, couldn't boil a kettle. Yeah, that's it. And that's the other one. Is it here? I got some fire lighters. Any good to you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's it's uh, people that haven't been on a steam engine don't they don't they don't see the the empathy between the men, the engine. No, that's right. And it is an Everything. empathy. Yeah. And some people got it. Some people haven't. No, you know. that's right. Yeah. I know that when I started on the railway, there was there was about ten of us started within a couple of months. Yeah. And at the end of it, I was the only one left. Yeah, Everybody we'll be, had gone. Yeah, you know. we've got better paid jobs, no no shift work, I suppose. No shift work, I think yeah. that was a thing, like, yeah. You know, particularly if they were getting married. Yeah. You know, wives didn't want them out all the time no, of the no, day. No, Yeah, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a changed world out there now, isn't it? Crikey, yeah. 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 I mean, I don't go on the railway very much, but when I do, it, it seems completely alien, because this here is how even I remember it. Yeah, of course. And you're living yeah. in the past, yeah. which in some ways is not a bad thing. No, it's not at all. Yeah. Yeah. So just um, one more question for you, Mick, and I know you touched on it earlier, and I, and I fully understand it was probably just another day, um, but you mentioned earlier that you did work over the Watercrest line on an occasion during the electrification excursions. Do you remember much about it? Not really. It was just, uh, well, just another day, really. It was, I've never been on the Watercrest line before. I found out why it was called the Watercrest line. Um, uh, and basically, that's it. Um, went over it a couple of times during the electrification. Uh, mm. It really only came to prominence to me um, when it became a preserve railway. Mm. You know, uh, and it seems such a shame mm. that it don't go to well, Winchester yeah. and pop out the other well, end like we used to. Yeah. Well, if it has, yeah. we wouldn't be here now, would we? That's, no, that's true. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't know about you, but. Everybody that's been on an engine here, a bridge at Medstead, mm. it might be what it's officially called, but it's we've, all, we've always known it as Thank Christ Bridge. We got there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. being, on, being yeah. over it, I can't yeah. understand. Yeah. 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 If things ain't going to gain, it's a long way up. Yeah. If things are going swimmingly, it's not a problem. You, know. you wish it was going the other way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we used to have. We used to have uh, a grub at Reading, yeah. at the old Reading depot, yeah. which was which was uh, down below the western. Oh yeah, yeah. And quite often you'd see the western bloke coming by and he'd go pop, pop, pop on the whistle. He'd wave the tea can out, yeah. and the signal, put the signal back on and they'd stay there for about 20 minutes with making the tea. Yeah. 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 Oh, we could never do that. Yeah. Get the bloody sack. Yeah. My eldest son. Yeah. He's a, yeah. A, a driver, a, a driver instructor. So you've got a bit of family 
Yeah. yeah you know, yes. Any generation go back when you on the railway? Or you yeah, my yeah. dad. Really? Yeah, he started as a, as a horse cart driver at Twickenham. Yeah. When they had horses. Yeah. They were sort of mechanical horses. You know, yeah. Yes, yeah, the scarabs or yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He, uh, he took them and he finished up as a guard at Felton during the war. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, as I said, it's... I think railway men are like farmers. It isn't a job, it's a way of life. That's, that's how we, you know. Yeah. yeah, you're either in or you're out. There isn't much. Yeah, no, there's no in between. No. No. Yeah. No, it's, 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 well, I've got no family connection with the railways whatsoever. Yeah, no, nothing at all. No, no, no. I just sort of. I was about four or five, and railways were kind of interesting, and we lived at Burwood. We used to go to either Salisbury or Poole. Yeah. And. Uh, it all seemed rather nice and interesting and everything else, and I could sit there for ages. <laughs> not that I was allowed to. It was, come on, get a move on, you know, all this sort of thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's something that gets in your blood. Yeah, and then that's it's, true. And then it's like, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, I, when this place was starting to be mooted, it was going to open up, and, or they were going to try and open it up. I sort of came up here on my motorbike, and um, well, 40 odd years later, I'm still here. <laughs> the rest is history. That's the one, yeah. 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 Well, I've worked with some really you really work with some decent guys, not just foot plate staff, but you work yeah. with some decent people, you know, yeah. it, it, it's a bit of, yeah, it comes a bit of way of life in the end, you know? Yeah, that's right. If you're having a really rough week at work, you can think, well, weekend's coming, or, I can be doing that up there, yeah. you know, <laughs> sort of switch off, you know. Yeah. So what's it left at Felton now, then? What's load, left? Yeah. Load of, load of waste of rain and... No, I've built this new depot there. Oh, it's on the same site, is that's it? That's it, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, it's it's not on the same site as the, the old local was. No, it's, no. It's coming towards the station or yeah. the town. Yeah. But it's it's quite a lot of it there. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's very uh, pristine at the present. Mm. When I walked up into the mess room there, I thought, yeah. well, this is how it should look. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is a bit real, isn't it? Yeah. But you know, I dare say you could say, I mean, conditions. Most of the running sheds and everything else was pretty rough, wasn't it? Oh, cross, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, sorts the men from the boys. Yes, yeah, I was saying Those are a nervous disposition. Yeah. Bloke, bloke, we, had a, we had a door there at yeah. one point. And there was no door knob or anything like it. It was the old chair bolt. Oh, yeah. Driven through the wooden <laughs> door. <laughs> the last time it was in steam was in 64, you said. No, last days of 63. Last 63. Last, yeah, it was withdrawn, I think, early January 64. And as I said, she had a broken frame. They just just swapped the tender off of um, 830s, one of the 800s, the six wheelers. Yeah. They nicked 37. her tender. They nicked her tender. They go yeah. on, go on with one wheel had a six wheel tender. Cool. Yeah. Question is, Mick, so was, still it, was it because of you? Was it? <laughs> Did you break it? <laughs> I think many <laughs> tried, but nobody succeeded. I think. <laughs> yeah. So, well, it's a driver's it's a driver's responsibility, isn't it? Or were you, you, know, were you driving yeah. then? Were you driving then? No, I was still I was still a fireman. Oh, then. that's all right. Yeah. You're in the clear then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was just coming up to go and drive. Yeah. But uh, no. so you sort of had you sort of missed perhaps the glory days that you had the sort of like the fag end, did you? A little bit of driving. You see. Well, I, I did eight years on the shovel before I went on the juice. Yeah. So I, I started at fifteen and passed yeah. out for driving when I was twenty three. So. Yeah. I did, uh, yeah. had quite a bit of the rough, yeah. you know. But it was a lot of fun. I yeah. wouldn't say I had, it was ever I, I yeah. got out of bed and thought, oh, <laughs> I don't want to go to work, you know. It was always, I always wanted to go there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I got married, I bought my wife a washing machine, so <laughs> mum didn't have to do me overalls. <laughs> that was the best money you ever spent, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But there was three of us on the railway. There was, there was, well, actually, there was four of us. There was my dad, then there was me, yeah. then my young brother Dennis, and then our youngest brother Jeff. They were all on the railway. Mm. My, my dear old mum, she used to have to make sandwiches for all of us. So she used to have a, a bowl over one lot with my name on it, a bowl on another lot with dad's name on it, and then she'd have a break because the other two mm. were late turn, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And this is the thing that's forgotten about the railway, it's, mm. it's the, the families behind you that, that yeah. get you up and get you going. Well, it's, the same, you know? it's the same as, you know, my wife lets me come up here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Not everybody would. No. 
just don't let you go home, though, does she? No, no. Well, I think not, I think it's a, one of those things that if you're up here, they know what you're up to. If you're somewhere else, they don't know what you're up no, to. That's right. <laughs> So I bet she says to you, well, why do you come home drunk one some days when you're up there <laughs> <laughs> throwing grease about? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, those are the days, yeah. Yeah, well, we won't, we won't, we won't record too much of that. <laughs> I mean, what you used to be able to get no. away with and have a, have a few beers now, oh, we wouldn't even, even dream of it. We wouldn't even think about it. Yeah. Oh, well, we used to have a local at Felton. It was called the Duke of York. Yeah. That and was, the, the yeah. foreman used to have a direct line in there. Uh, have you got you got Mickey Chandler in there or yeah. Fred Brown? Send him yeah, back. Send him back. Yeah, yeah. And you stagger back there. <laughs> you got, well, yeah. got a square a couple of inches up. Yeah. So sweat, sweat, too so sweaty, yeah. Jake. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but that's about the worst job on any bloody engine is having to clean the bloody grate, yeah, grate that's and right. chuck it out. Yeah, bloody clean. I thought the drop grate was a great invention. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. We tried to put one on these, but there's not enough depth enough room. You, well you've got the brake rigging in the way yeah and you've got an axle and it's very difficult to try and do anything you know and yeah. we have tried it in there. yeah it's, it's not designed for it um, but yeah i know the old standards and just rock the old lever and mm. down, down it goes yeah it's great yeah. <laughs> so anyway well what we'll, we just plod on with this one and we'll be get a run in yeah we'll give you a shake mate yeah it's nice to meet you cheers mate Nice firm grip there. Yeah. <laughs> Being Felton, did you ever get out on the West Countries? Or? Oh, yeah. You did, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. got on them all. Yeah. So you recommend them on a nice July day when it's about 100 in the shade and 8 Yes, the yes. You, you go and come off a six stone lighter. Yeah. <laughs> now, on a hot day, they, can, they can't be better, can they? <laughs> Especially when you're in Can you remember the, um, again it might be just because it was another day, but can you remember what class of loco was your last firing to? Hmm, I can't really say. No. No, it's one of those things that you just drifted over, you know, you drifted over from steam, then to that we had the Cromptons at uh, Felton, yeah. uh, and then I left, you know, so then I was on the electrics all the time. But uh, I wasn't one of these, you get lots of, lots of guys who, they've got a notebook and they'll even put what sort, sort of coal they had and everything, like, you know. Um, you ever met Jimmy Lester? Yeah, no, Jimmy, yeah. I mean, Jim's, Jim's got a book for everything, like, you know. Yeah. He could, you could name a day today and say, well, what did you do on that day, Jim? And he'd go, there you are, that's what I did. Yeah. And really, thank God there are people like that. Yeah. Because there's a lot of history tied up in what they dropped down, isn't there? You know? Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. Even down to the somewhat coal they, they yeah. had, you know. I don't know about you, but you, there's two days you remember. You remember the ones that weren't so good and the ones that were very good, and in the middle there's a lot of stuff you can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So rewording the question slightly, and, and I know it was just a job, and it was every day, but was there a particular loco that you thought I'm going to have a good day on this? There's a couple of Charlies, C11, she was good, enjoyed working on her, you know. And there was a little um, 177, we used to push the coal trucks onto the hopper at film. She was a nice little, little tool, right, you know. Didn't go, go too far on it, it was mostly in the yard. Mm. but. The reason I used to like it, there was a nice old driver on it, and his name was Bert Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> no relation. <laughs> so Mick, you've enjoyed the day around the Waterquest line, you've been in the sheds, you've been in the, through the carriage shed, you've been up to the boiler shop. What do you think? I reckon you're doing a wonderful job. Yep. Um, and really, you need, you need to... I know you're successful, but I'm sure you could be more successful than you are. Oh yeah. You know. Set the targets high and aim. Yeah. Because you've got such a, a range of not only machinery but knowledge that yeah. can come here and not only do your own um, work, but I can see that you do work for other railways. And yeah. all credit to you. Thanks mate, we really appreciate that. And that's 
that's not directed at the Uri Group, that's directed at the, at the whole family, because mm. the Watercrest Line is a yeah. family. We've got volunteers, I prefer to call them unpaid staff, and we've got paid staff. Mm. Um, and there's a real mix of people, but they all, they all aim high, we've all got the one goal. The railway is far more important than any, yeah. any single one of us. Um, but look, I just wanted to say a big thanks to you for coming on. It's, oh. we're, we're the actors. Whether we're working on the, in the background on the things, or we're about driving, whether we're on the stations, in the main, we haven't done it before. We weren't there in the day. No. It's people like yourself that is so important to Heritage Railways. It's um, not so beautiful, so, sir. You, well, you are, you know, and you, you've taken the time to come along and, and share your story with us. Um, and I'm going to say it now, I really appreciate Matt Bentley behind the camera there mm. doing all this as well. But without you, we wouldn't know really what happened back in the day. And that's what Barry that you've been talking to will, will tell you drives us. Mm. You know, we, we enjoy doing it. We have a laugh. Um, but the drive is to create as best we can what it used to be. Mm. So people like yourself coming along and sharing your story. You've come to talk to the Uri Group. We're just a small part of the Watercoast Line from the whole family, from the chairman of both boards, right through to all the paid staff, unpaid staff, and our visitors. Can I just say thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you, mate. Thanks a lot for coming. Thank you. And when 499 is running, come back as our special guest. Oh, Get yourself on the body. You will. <laughs>